when someone says, your quote was more expensive. Now, this was prompted the other day by a Facebook post in the Carpenters Talk group by someone who'd lost out on a job to someone cheaper. So he'd already lost, right? And he was concerned. He thought he'd priced his job fairly and he wondered how another builder, I think it was a small extension, the point works for any trade. He wondered how the other builder had been much cheaper than his price. And he was checking his price, right, with the group. And his question really was, I'm being reasonable with the way I've priced it. Now, when this happens, your customer says someone else was cheaper and we've gone with them, not you. A whole heap of possible scenarios exist. And I want to explore them now because I think it's interesting and I think it will help you if you find yourself in this position like this guy did, right? So the first possible scenario, right? Some of the seven reasons why they might be saying that to you. The first one is they're lying, right? This is my favorite one, of course. They could well be not telling you the truth, right? If they've chosen to go with someone else, it's almost never because they were cheaper than you. That's kind of a face saver that people say instead of the truth. Can you imagine someone saying, we went with someone else because my wife thinks your eyes are too close together or some other reason, yeah, they didn't like you, right? Or, or we were just price checking the builder we prefer. Their price is actually slightly higher than yours, but it's close enough and we like him better. We might try to make him match your price. Thanks for all your hard work, right? They're not going to say that either, are they? Well, how about this? We had a big row and now we're getting divorced and we're not doing the build. Probably not going to say that either. It's embarrassing. Well, how about this? This is from somebody who's working for a business, a builder or a big, bigger business. I have to get three quotes. It's my job. But I prefer to use this company. They take me to the strippers. I get three quotes. I make sure my preferred builder or subcontractor or whatever is within Cooey, and then I award them the job. That's a possibility too. No one says that to you though, do they? You get the idea, right? The easy lie or the face saver lie of you missed out because you were too expensive is likely not really the truth. You might easily not be out on price. You just didn't win for other reasons. And I'll talk about not winning for other reasons separately in another video, right? I'm also talking about a situation here where you didn't win. You could get the same comment, you're too expensive, where they're hoping you'll reduce your price to match or get near the real or not real lower price that they're talking about, right? And the same possibilities are true. These, these are true, rather. These same scenarios are potentially true. They've got different intentions, and they're, but they're the same possibilities. And I've talked about that one before. Right, we've discussed the possibility that it's not true and you're not really more expensive, that it's a lie. But they might also not be lying. It might be true. And I've got six, six other scenarios to describe to you. Right, number two then. It is true. You've cocked it up. Or well, there's something about the job or your trade that you don't know or that you've misunderstood or your rates are higher than everybody else's. And so it's somehow you've got this far without knowing. Somewhere along the way, you've charged more than you should have or more than another competent, decent trades person or trades business would or should. Well, this is the one you're mostly afraid of, right? This is the one that scares you, that you're wrong, the possibility that you're wrong, even that you're consistently wrong, and you're missing out on work because of it. I'll make another video about this another time, about how to know if your price is kind of on point, is right. So that's a possibility that you've cocked it up, you've overpriced. Another possibility is that the other business has cocked it up and they've underpriced. They've missed something out, or forgotten something, or cocked up their mass. Right, that's a possibility too, isn't it? Yet another, I think I'm on to number four, is that they don't really understand how to price. They've come in low and maybe they'll be unprofitable or not very profitable. Or they're a one man show with no overheads and they are pricing just to make a living. That kind of thing, right? It's a bit different than making a mistake. They just could be a cheap business that's different to yours. I'm still going, right? Number five, maybe your competition really wants this job and is discounting to win for some reason of their own that you don't know about, right? To get in the door for future work, perhaps to boot you out so that they can keep all the future work, maybe raise the price later. Maybe they're quiet and they've got people on staff who need paying anyway and they'd rather take a low profit job that pays people's wages than have them sitting there doing nothing. Number six, maybe they play a dirty game and come in with low quotes, but exclude parts of the job. So the final cost ends up being much higher than the quote. 
Well, they don't do that so much, but they gouge on the variations and they hope to make up their margin on the variations. And that's a very old game, right? It's a dirty game, but it's an old game. People do play it and customers are the ones who pay the price. And the last one, number seven, maybe they employ cheap foreign labour, maybe some pommy backpackers. I was one of those. Or they cut corners and compromise quality or safety. Or they buy cheap materials or they buy stolen materials. Or they aren't properly insured or they won't be around to fix any issues down the track. That was scenario seven. All of these are possible scenarios, aren't they? All of these are possible reasons that your quote is higher than someone else's. There are probably others. If I've missed something obvious or funny, feel free to drop it in the comments. Now, when this happens to you, whether it's when they're telling you you didn't get the job or whether they're using the same comment to try and encourage you to drop your price and win the job, it's very difficult for you to know what's really going on. It's very difficult to know whether they're lying or telling the truth. And it's very difficult if they're telling the truth to know which of those scenarios it is and thus how to respond. It's also very difficult for your customer to know which of these scenarios is true. Obviously they know if they're lying, but the other six, they don't know, right? So let's assume for our discussion at the moment that they're not lying. They don't know which of the other six possibilities are true, do they? And this of course is your opportunity, right? As salespeople, for your company. If they've already awarded the contract to someone else, you're too late for this one, cut your losses, move on. But if they've not yet awarded the business, you have an opportunity to explain some of this stuff to them and help them out and of course position your business as the good guys, the ones who aren't gonna do these terrible things to them. But you're already on the back foot, aren't you? You're coming from a position where you're already more expensive, your trust and your, and your helpfulness is already damaged. So what you should do, of course, is prepare yourself and your sales process before you find yourself in this situation, which of course means now. So this doesn't happen to you next time. Explain these scenarios and how they're possible and explain how in your case, they aren't true, they aren't happening. Explain how you calculate your price, your rates, your process for calculating from your rates to the cost of the quote. Show them clearly what's included and not and show them how to check other quotes about what's included and what's excluded. Do this early in your meetings, in your sales process. So, right? so do this early in your sales process, do it in your meetings when you talk to people before you do your quote and document it in your quote when you present your quote and explain it to them as you deliver your proposal, okay? And I mean proposal, not just a quote. I'm gonna whiz through each scenario because I'm enjoying this, okay? We'll leave the lying one out, right? If you're early in your sales process, hopefully they're not lying to you yet, you're preempting the your quotes more expensive and the kind of implied comment for the same stuff right so let's talk about the, your price explaining your rates and how you work it out means they can compare your quote your price for final price to another one and see what's different they can look for a mistake and they can find one it might be you it might be a, your competitor or they can look for the difference and say oh look you've included this and they haven't and you can have a discussion same goes if it's your competitor's mistake, right? Understanding and comparing rates and inclusions and exclusions and the process for calculating the final price helps your customer get clarity and, of course, avoid a situation where they're working with a supplier or trade who's made a mistake. The third scenario where your competitor is cheaper, there'll be disadvantages hiring a cheaper business, right? There'll be stability or risk. You know, a one-man show or a very small show is much more likely to suffer interruptions to a job, maybe someone's sick or whatever, than, than a business with five or 10 people. So you can point out the risks of the cheaper quote if you've got some knowledge, if everyone understands it. If the customer, if sorry, if your competitor really wants the job, this sounds like a win for the customer, it might be, but how confident are they that this is the case, right? And you're gonna help your customer try and figure that out. The dirty game, of course, is very unnerving, right, for the customer. They don't want this, do they? They don't want to get a quote for X amount and find it's significantly more by the time they get to the end of their project. That must be terrifying. So you're looking at those exclusions particularly. And the corner cutting people, right, the ones who are going to quote cheap and do it cheap, the customer is going to get a much worse outcome than they want. Show them how to check references, perhaps, past jobs, licenses, insurances, look at current job sites, things like that. So I've written this knowing that the customers you're explaining this to in the earlier part of your sales process before you get caught in the your quote's too expensive situation, right? 
But I write all this knowing that they might not care. They might feel that they can manage the situations. They might feel that the cheaper price is worth the risk or that they can manage that risk or manage that supplier or that tradesperson or trades business and, and choose someone apparently or genuinely cheaper than you. They might do that. But what you're doing when you explain this is you're building a relationship and you're building some trust and you're maximizing the chance that your customers see your price in context, right? That they understand what they're getting for their money with your business. And they understand that other quotes might not be giving them the same for the money, right? And they can go and check and they may, can make an informed choice. You're doing a good thing for your business. You're maximizing the chances that they'll work with you. You're building that relationship and you're doing a good thing for your customer, which never hurts. And it's not even difficult, this process, right? I know it sounds like a lot of work. There's a bit of work. This video took me a couple of hours to write yesterday and today. If you're my client, you might spend a few hours watching the video training and talking to me, writing your sales process and what you say at each stage of it and writing your proposal template. But once you've done all that, you can reuse it over and over again for every sale that you make. You'll win more jobs and you'll probably win them at higher margins as well, right? Because you won't be competing so hard on price. If you think that improving your sales process is worth some effort, maybe I can help. You can book a 10 minute chat with me or you can come to a tools down workshop. Follow your nose and you'll find the way. See ya.